so building so at the moment we've been pretty our builds have been pretty simple right every time we're just doing like uh, like uh, j context is building if it has um, what do you call it um, if it has a main it creates the xe etc so but generally when you want to do a build system it's going to be far more complicated right so this is how at the moment this gets handled so let's say you just create a function right and this is the function that is going to uh, handle your building process so in the end you're going to do something like this and this is so this is very interesting because it's again it's everything is done in the same language so if you know something you can just do everything and you can access anything and so it's, it's pretty pretty it's, it's much easier I think than you know having multiple contexts with build systems in Python or whatever right it's, it's just much easier for some like anybody in theory can help with any part so so we need to do a few things from the start so let's say build options let's say get um, build options this is one of the problems at the moment that because there's no IntelliSense or whatever I need to keep looking at stuff to to figure out what exactly is it called um, hopefully it, it would be super nice to have something that I don't have to to search around and set build options build options so basically now nothing happens so when we were building stuff in the past you would always get these messages of at least saying something like oh I couldn't find a main right uh, let's say if I go like J what were we using let's say macros right it's going like oh workspace one has an error that I couldn't find the main so I couldn't compile so at the moment what you're doing is saying okay whenever you're launching J there's a default workspace and you're just saying this workspace will not output anything you don't care about you don't care about searching main um, this is where you're going to run this workspace is where you're going to run your build code okay so this is the first part so we have this is already cleared right this is the the play the building workspace so now we're going to create a new workspace that's actually going to be the one handling our code itself. And let's say we have an executable name. Um, that is going to be now build options dot output type equals build executable build options dot output executable name equals let's build name and build options dot output um, path equals So basically, at the moment, we're defining. Okay, we want to build. Um, well, I need to go set uh, build options. Uh, the build options for workspace, right? So we're just saying, okay, on this workspace, you're going to you're going to be building the executable, and you. I want you to call it this, and I want to put it there. And so this is already set, and now we just need to go. Uh, add build build file. We always need to give it just one entry point, right? So we are going to use the hello world.j. So now when we build and you know, clear this out, there's no compilated stuff there. So what did I do? What did I not do? Sorry, my bad. W, right? Because I was passing it. Um, to this one and saying there's no output so that wouldn't work 
and basically here we have now created the exe right so if I go now hello world it's there it's the one we defined on the other day that basically loads that other file and has this function inside right that just does this right um, so now let's get this a bit more complicated right so you can do something that is um, you can tell that you want to start intercepting that workspace and um, this doesn't really matter much but I prefer to put it like this because this one kind of will trigger it but anyway I prefer to put it like this and then you you also need to tell it okay I want to end intercept w but then what you can do is while true you can go message equals uh, the compiler wait for message and for now let's just go print um, we're just going to print that message um, well we're going to not print the message we're going to print that data yeah that's the that thing so now let's see how it goes I always make this mistake begin <laughs> What the hell? Compiler. <laughs> Compiler. <laughs> there we go. Ah, <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. It's a pointer. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're in a while too. So we're going to have to intercept that message. So if message dot um, kind compiler message kind of com complete. So for now, let's just do this. Okay, now it finishes. So basically. Yeah, it's going to um, well, it's going to print you all these messages, but these messages are of different types, so you need to see what you want. So, for example, at the moment we have this complete, but we don't know did it pass or did it fail, right? So, for example, if I open here the the hello world, or what is it? If I go just you know something, right? I'm not um, it's just going to compile, but I'm not going to get well, it's, it's going to print all that stuff, but I'm not going to get, okay, was this a success or not, right? So I need to, um, on the build, um, on the on the reading of the message, I need to go, okay, this is a message kind that is compiler message complete. So now I have to go like, you know, message complete is equal to a cast of compiler message complete. And then... If um, so, let's put something here. Let's go. Success uh, is called false, and then success equal to message complete dot error code. Okay, and then we can just go like if success print. Right, and there we have it. So let's just remove this. And there's tons of stuff that you can get from here because it's going to like mention functions and whatever. It's a lot of stuff, and I haven't really delved into this. But he has a really interesting uh, demo that he's showing off the capabilities of intercepting the messages. And but basically, you're exposed to everything that the compiler is having to handle. So you can just do you can just check whatever, right? And again, everything in the same language, right? So this is really interesting. Um, so let's say that you would do this, but now let's say that we go, okay, this is cool, but I want to go, you know, at the end I want to run, right? So you want to go, okay, if there's a success, you want to run. So there's this module we can add here that is, 
and that you can just go as um, run command executable name. So now it ran, there's a success, again it's printing like all the stuff the compiler prints, and then it runs in the end. Right? So let's say that you go like, okay, this is cool, but I don't want to run all the time. I want to, you know, pass it as an argument or something. So we can do that too, right? So let's go like run on success. Um, and then you can go uh, args is equal to compiler get, what is it called? Get command line get command line arguments and you can go for each of the args if uh, it's equal to case run then run on success equals true and now we can just go success and run on success Right, you build it, it doesn't run, then you can pass the arguments doing this, minus minus, and then whatever arguments you want to pass, and it's going to execute. Right? Um, but there's more. Because this whole thing like just does tons of stuff at compiler level, you can at compilation uh, time, you can do something that is far more complicated and far more interesting. So I already have a file done, but I'm just going to load it here. That is, and again, he has an example that is much, much better than this one. <laughs> uh, but because you're, I'm building stuff like from scratch, I still don't have anything like uh, interesting enough to, to use. But let's say you have this, right? I have this file that is build GUI. And then what I'm going to do is like, okay, before building, I'm just going to go show GUI. And then because I just want to wait a bit at the end, I'm just going to go wait GUI, and we'll check what those are doing. So now, if I go build and run, ah, it's too fast. Okay, so let's add a, a bit of sleep here. So this is opening a window. It's at the moment I'm just <laughs> clearing the color, <laughs> changing the color. But if you look here, what's happening is. I have a show GUI, which is a macro. And the macro is um, loading the, the GL, OpenGL. It's creating a thread in the parent's um, context, in the parent's um, scope. The, the parents, I mean, the, where it's being called. It's starting that one, and then it's saying, OK, defer the destroy, again, in the parent scope. And the weight is just okay. While you're done, you just you know while you're uh, um, while it's not done again. It's something that is in the parent scope because this is the first time we're, we're mentioning it. You just wait. And here, what it's doing is it's creating an SDL window. It's uh, creating a GL context. At the moment, I'm just like setting the color gray. And then whenever this success is set, and the success is not defined here because it comes from here. Because this is at global space. So whenever you're loading something, it has access to the global space. If you're importing, it doesn't. But if you're loading, it does. So here, it's just going to wait. Whenever this is uh, true, it's just going to go, OK, set, change the, the, the title of the window, set it to green, quit. And then it's just going to wait 200 milliseconds, uh, two, two seconds so that we, we see it. And then it's just going to quit, right? And this is how we bind everything we learned today together. <laughs> so this is what I mean. This, this is so powerful because you could have actual, you can have actual OpenGL if you want. Not that you should, but you could have something like, um, again, it, it, because also if you had complexity on this system, then you're going to create something that can crash. So it may not be great that you're uh, compiling and you're getting crashes on the thing that is displaying it, but it's very... Um, 
very powerful. Yes, in theory you can have a game running, in theory, no, in practice. Like, there's this demo that he does, but again, it's more complex because you need to build a bunch of blocks, for example, to, to be able to render stuff, to render text, etc., right? Because um, you'd have, that's why I'm just clearing the color, right? I'm not putting any um, polys or anything on screen, but you can. And he has this uh, demo where he's basically collecting all the information that the compiler is, is putting out and he's creating like a histogram of how many times functions are called and stuff like this, and the size of functions, stuff like this. And while he's doing this, he's showing it like in, in an animation and um, playing audio and all this stuff. So this is really, really interesting and very, very powerful. Also, something like a little thing is that this is the only thing that you can do to make something private. When you put scope file, it means that whatever is next is after this is something that only belongs in can only be accessed accessed in this file. Uh, and then I think that you can also the other one is called like expo, scope export. So if you would want to have you know like a bunch of stuff that is just for this file, and just and then go back to exporting. But um, yeah, basically you know it's, it's you're running threads, you're launching Windows, you're doing tons of stuff, right? It's it's very very interesting and very very powerful. And that's it, basically. I'm done. I have nothing else to teach you guys. It's done. It's over. Last stream. Do you have any questions about anything? <laughs> well, I think it's pretty well supported because it's just a matter of um it's whatever you can do with OpenGL. So you're using like the uh, OpenGL library, right? There's a module here that he has somewhere that basically, you know, has like, I think everything in GL. Um, you have everything like defined. And basically, like, let's say that there's a new function in the library that you want that is not there, you can just add it, right? I, I still don't know this nomenclature well, but basically the idea is that, okay, there's something that has this signature that is foreign. So this means, like, it's, it's, an, it's in another place, right? It's not being defined here, it's being loaded dynamically somewhere else. <laughs> no, probably not. Uh, I don't know. I don't have. Uh, that's the thing. At the moment, I don't know anything more interesting to share uh, about the language. So at the moment, I would say that this is the last one. But maybe you know, as I'm doing stuff, maybe I'll see something that is cool, and I'll uh, uh, you know think about doing a stream. But at the moment, I have like nothing more interesting to show. So. Yes, the last one was supposed to be the last. <laughs> But then I saw, you know, because I played around with the compiler stuff, I saw the, um, the stuff with the macros and the iteration, which to me is really interesting, that the fact that you don't have to be creating all these classes and whatever um, to, to handle, like, iterators. Something that is always super annoying, you know, that you have that, that thing that is, like, you know, some, some type that has, you know, something and other, and then you have, like, iterator... You know, I <laughs> I really hated these things, but so it's I, I much well we'll see. But I, I at the moment I kind of prefer the direction this is taking compared to the the previous stuff. So yeah, see you in two weeks. <laughs> and basically that's it. I don't think I have anything else. If you guys don't have any more questions, it's the end. It was a pretty short one, huh? How much time did it take? An hour and fifteen, that's nothing. <laughs> so that's it. So thank you guys. Um, still don't know when it's going to be available for more people. It's still just... The beta is still like eight people still. I'm not sure when he's planning on opening it up. And he has been fixing some of the bugs we've been finding. 
but overall it's pretty I would say it's a pretty good state given that nobody else had hands on this so it's, it's very interesting and hopefully soon he'll open it to more people or maybe even you know like uh, allow us to suggest people to to enter it or whatever I don't know so check his check his streams if, if you want to check streams check his streams because he has tons of stuff and some of the stuff is really really interesting like that one with the compiler just shows how powerful it is the fact that you can just get all that information about your program at, at uh, compile time it's really really cool so thanks a lot guys take care and i hope to see you guys whenever i go there to to holland yeah take care bye